Today we're talking about my favorite 50 millimeter lens for use on micro four thirds. Let's get started. Hey, thanks for joining me. Seems like I am running into the worst luck with weather when it comes to shooting videos. I typically do these on, on the weekends and last two weekends and now the third weekend it's been either windy or rainy or both. Um, today it's both. It's it's relatively windy outside, which means shooting outside is a little challenging, and um, plus there's rain, and it's blowing. So, today I want to talk about, though, my favorite 50 millimeter lens for use on micro four-thirds. But first I want to talk about why a 50 millimeter manual lens, a vintage lens, on micro four-thirds. Why would, you know, what would that be about? So, the 50 millimeter lens, in this case 55 millimeter, on micro four thirds is of course then equivalent to, you know, if it's a 50, it would be equivalent to 100. In this case, equivalent to a 110 millimeter lens on micro four thirds. And that focal length to me is one of my favorites in terms of um, shooting, you know, as a medium telephoto for shooting um, portraits, for shooting product photography, for doing. Um, just all kinds of um, photography. It allows you to kind of get in a little tighter, and yet still um, it's not so long that you can't include, you know, a fair, fair amount of imagery in your in your pictures. So that focal length, you know, I think a lot of people, if you think about it, you know, for a full frame or a 35 millimeter film camera, you know, it's not uncommon to spend a fair chunk of change to get a 85 or a 90 or a 100 millimeter 105 millimeter fast lens um, for use on a full frame camera that's a, a very desirable focal length well the cool thing is on micro four thirds there's a ton of very inexpensive 50 millimeter lenses that then of course act as a 100 millimeter lens they're fast they're inexpensive they're sharp and you know so that's one of the great things about using vintage lenses on micro four thirds is, you know, while you, you know, being a crop sensor camera, while wide angles are more of a challenge, you know, finding a wide angle lens. Um, when it comes to short telephotos, long telephotos, you have some real advantages. Now the lens I want to talk about today is this super multi-coated Takamar 55 millimeter F2. Now, this lens I'm, I really like on micro four thirds for several reasons. Number one, it's very small and compact. It, it doesn't weigh much and um, it's very affordable. I looked on eBay yesterday and you can see these starting around $30 going, well, some of them went to crazy ridiculous prices, but there were plenty in the 30 to $50 range. Um, and like any vintage lens, you wanna make sure the aperture moves freely. Um, you know, so if you're, if you're um, able to turn the aperture ring and watch it stop down, you know, that's, that's good. It, um, focus should be smooth. You know, the glass should be clear and free of haze or fungus or, you know, a few dust specks are okay, but you know, if it's got some obviously optical issues, you want to avoid it. There's plenty of really good ones out there. Now, the Takamar lenses, if you haven't owned one of these, they are just beautifully made. The um, focus is just super smooth, just buttery smooth. The, the f-stops click in nice and precisely. The whole thing is just made extremely well. And like I say, because these are vintage lenses and they're made for film cameras, they're very affordable. This lens has an M42 or threaded screw mount and adapters are available very inexpensively. I think between 10 and $20 you can get an adapter on on online auction site, um, on eBay, and uh, just threads on, and then now that's ready to mount on your Micro Four Thirds camera. So this lens uh, in particular, the 55 millimeter F2, you know, there, there are faster lenses. I have some 50 or 55 millimeter F1.4 lenses. I don't really own any F1.2 lenses, but there are some out there but they're large. I mean, they get quite a bit bigger in diameter. They're heavier. I like the size of this. It's not overly big and on a micro four thirds camera, it doesn't seem out of place. The, um, this lens will focus to a little less than one and a half feet. So it gets fairly close. If I needed to focus closer, I could use some extension tubes, 
but frankly, if I'm getting closer to that, I'm probably going to grab a macro lens. Um, F stops from two to, to F16. Um, this has a six bladed, um, aperture, so it does not make a perfect circle, but the out of focus highlights on it are nice and round. Uh, you know, if you stop down a bit, they start to look you know, hexagonal, but the, um, if you're shooting wide open, which, you know, when you shoot wide open, of course, the blades aren't in play, so you just get a nice round, uh, out of focus highlights are nice and smooth and round. One of the things about this, the out of focus, when you shoot this wide open, the out of focus backgrounds are very nice, soft and creamy, and um, highlights are, you know, soft, round, um, I guess bubbles or whatever you want to call them, but they're not um, distracting. You know, some, some cameras have really interesting, and I hate the word bokeh, but um, I don't want my background to be interesting. I don't, that's, you know, the background is not the point of the image. So I generally, especially like shooting portraits, I just want my background to be nice and soft, out of focus, creamy, just not distracting. I don't want it to be the subject of the photo in most cases. Um, so these are, like I say, they're very affordable, nice and compact. And the other thing is this lens is extraordinarily sharp. All the way from F2 down to 16, uh, you'll find this lens to be very sharp. You can shoot it wide open and get good sharp results. And um, it's uh, just a pleasure to use. So I, I really like using this, this lens on my Micro Four Thirds camera. Today I'm going to take this out and use it on this um, EM5 Mark II. And uh, this camera, of course, has focus peaking and a magnifier, so I can get critical on focus. The focus peaking makes it very, very easy. And uh, look at it. I mean, it's just a nice compact lens on a micro four-thirds camera. It's, um, you know, some of the 50s I have, uh, faster ones, are just, they're large and they're heavy. And they're just, they just seem to me out of place. This is a, a fast enough lens for most uses, F2, that, um, you know, unless I'm just shooting in really low light conditions, it's, it's plenty of speed and certainly, you know, anytime in the daylight it is, but even in, in relatively low light, it's with today's digital cameras, this lens has enough speed to, to handle just about most situations you'd run into. Anyway, so this is what I'm going to be uh, trying to go around and shoot some pictures with today. Um, we'll, um, get some of those pictures up so you can take a look at them. I think you'll find if you're looking for a compact 50 millimeter lens, got great optical performance and beautifully made, very affordable, this, um, this lens is really hard to beat. Now, one thing I do want to mention, if, and if you talk about some of the lenses from the 60s and 70s, you'll find and talk online about some of these having thorium glass and being radioactive. So, uh, and that's true. Now, I believe this lens, the, the back three elements do have thorium. I've seen all kinds of reports of people with Geiger counters and all kinds of crazy stuff online. And um, I, I think the consensus is really just not something you have to worry about. You know, I think one video I saw said, you know, if you held the camera to your eye for two hours, you'd have, you know, let's say um, you were shooting with it all day long and you actually had the camera up to your eye for two hours, you'd have the exposure of a couple of x-rays. Um, I, you know, I'm not sure how accurate any of that is. Um, you know, the, the radiation that comes from thorium, um, I think most people say that it's alpha rays, which are, are stopped very easily. Like a sheet of paper will stop alpha rays. Uh, but I've heard some people say that there's, um, you know, beta and gamma rays too. Um, I don't know the truth of it, but I did do an experiment with this lens and I thought, well, if this thing is really emitting that much radiation, you know, it should expose film, right? And I actually had some x-ray film that um, I used in, you know, from four or five cameras. So I actually, you know, put this lens on a lens board, put a sheet of four or five film, that x-ray film in my four or five camera and set it upright and actually laid some objects on the film. You know, if I'm going to x-ray something, I want to see if it'll make an image and put the lens on there and left it on there all night and processed the film. And the film was as clear as can be. There was no exposure at all. It sat there overnight, you know, like about 10 hours. So 
I know that in, in the, when I was a kid, my dad showed me uh, an old Kodak Aero Ektar that had, um, I think, thorium glass. Um, and we actually put a sheet of photo paper in, a, in an 8x10 photo box, set the lens on it, you know, did all that in the dark and, or safe light and close the box and let it sit overnight and then we process the paper and there was a black exposed circle uh, where that lens was sitting it definitely exposed that photo paper and you know that was so you know he was telling me about you know some lenses having radioactive elements so i thought you know my little experiment i should be able to see if there was enough radiation coming out of this to expose photo paper it was just as clear as can be there was no base density fog there was him in the paper i basically i processed a piece of blank film so <clears throat> if there is some radiation coming out of these it's extremely slight and I, I don't think from any practical standpoint that it's anything to worry about now that's not saying I wouldn't you know tape this thing to the side of my head and wear it for a few days I wouldn't do that but um, I think for normal photographic uses your exposure to anything that's coming out of this lens is so minimal to be uh, disregarded but that's my personal opinion if, if you're concerned about the effects of radiation from some vintage lenses, if that concerns you, then maybe they're not for you. But anyway, um, I think, you know, people have been using these lenses for a lot of time. To my knowledge, I've never heard of any reports of anyone getting sick or, you know, anything like that from camera lenses. You know, it's kind of hard to say. But anyway, so we're going to take some pictures. I'm going to, you know, drive around, get out as much as I can with the rain Try to get some images, and then we'll take a look at those. Hey, before we get started, if you would, please click on the like and subscribe buttons down below. That always helps the channel grow. And uh, let's take a look at some pictures from this lens. Well, there you have it, the uh, 55 millimeter F2 super multi-coated Takamar lens. I think just a fantastic lens for micro four thirds. I like the size, I like the image quality, I like the price. What else could you ask for? These, um, there are several versions of these. There's the auto Takamar, which is older, then there's the super Takamar, uh, which is, uh, you know, a little bit newer, and then the super multi-coated Takamar. I mean, the differences have to do with the coating uh, the lens coating as it was improved. The basic optical design is the same. They're going to deliver good image quality. Um, if you can find the super multi-coated version, the SMC as it's labeled, um, that's probably going to give you the best flare control. Um, but either way, any of them are, are really great lenses, very affordable. So um, if you have any thoughts or questions, please don't hesitate to leave me a comment. I always love hearing from you. And as always, thanks for watching.